All right, you know why Wing Chun fails? It's the training methodology and conditioning. It's as simple as that. Dominic is out here in Chicago. Is a Wing Chun. Hit that like button, subscribe button. Hit the thanks button. Show us some love doing this. I want to point something out. I'm going to show a very brief video that's not on uh, Wing Chun training, but it's just on a concept of training. And I want to give one of the biggest uh, uh, attributes to failure of Wing Chun that I think there is out there, and that's the methodology, methodology of training. I think one of the biggest reasons that I was so or am so successful in my Wing Chun journey is that I started out as a wrestler, right? So I wanted to box a little bit when I was a kid, but I was from the North Suburban uh, North Suburban area of Chicago. We really didn't have any boxing gyms. I think Pug's boxing gym opened up by the time I graduated high school. So I'd already been involved with wrestling for you know uh, ten years, and I'm like, all right, uh, well, that's I, I'm a wrestler at this point. I'm also a shorter guy. I'm five foot seven. So falling in love with wrestling when I first started, it was like it was easy for me. The one thing that, and I say this all the time, is the thing about boxers and wrestling and wrestlers and why they're so dangerous is when you really break it down from day one, what are they doing? They're doing contact. They're in your face contact, right? Yeah, you're going to learn like how to duck walk, how to do a, a double leg takedown, how to wind up just getting your posture straight. Or as a boxer, you're going to learn how to do a jab and a cross and a hook, and you're going to learn to stand there in static position. But eventually, relatively early on, much faster than they do in Wing Chun, they involve live training. So if you get, and, and not to mention the fact, unlike, and this is the excuse we use in Wing Chun, well, why doesn't it work in the MMA? It's an unleashed factor, right? I want to talk about this for a second. So if you don't train somebody for their fullest potential, how do they know where the limits are? What I mean by that is, in boxing, you can glove up. You can, you can headgear up, and you can go hard as you fucking can on an opponent who's going just as hard as you, and there's safety factors that are involved. So you know your limitations. You know that if you're punching full force, full speed, full movement, that if the gloves come off, that you know that punching that same way, you're going to run into elbows, you're going to run into heads, you're going to run into bones, you're going to run into problems that may hurt your fist. Consequently, too, you're going to run into the fact that my headgear's off, I'm not getting punched uh, in, in the face with, with, a, with a gloved hand, this might be a little bit more damaging or do more hurt. Plus, you know that if you, don't, if you do punch with an ungloved hand, you're at a higher risk of breaking your, fi your fist, right? That being said, too, if you look at wrestlers, what can they do? They can go as hard and as fast as they want to because it's a controlled circumstance. You're not punching. You're not kicking. You're grappling. You're twisting. You're torquing. You're wrenching. You are slamming. You're doing a lot of stuff that you can do full force. What do we do in Wing Chun? Soft, controlled, theory. A bunch of fucking theory, right? And when you apply that, if you didn't take that theory to the test, and yeah, how can you? How can you full force fox out somebody to the throat and expect them to get up and go, oh, yeah, that's great. All right, man, we got that. How can you full force take that pisiform bone, slam it right in the middle of somebody's face and go, okay, and know how it does and reacts to your body? A big problem. Another reason, again, too, is the training, right? And, and I'm going to I wanna play this video just for a second. I'm going to play like the first minute of it. This is Judd Reed, 100-man fight. Uh, this it's documentary, some of you saw a while back, and it's a real question to pose. All the training that I've been doing, it comes down to this one day. <laughs> to be pushed to my ultimate limits. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, wait, you shouldn't lift weights in Wing Chun. Oh, more lifting weights? Heavy weights? So I will try to do my absolute best and get all I've got. Holy shit. Taking hits, giving hits, running, training, hitting each other? Here's the, here's the problem, and I tell you this flat out. Uh, I, I really don't know that much about him or his style or whatnot. But you see this training they're doing, the full force type of training, and it is. There's conditioning, right, and, and whatnot. I don't care who you are in your Wing Chun journey. If you're going to tell me you're going to stand in front of that man and you're going to use your soft energy in front of him, you're going to be left to stain in the mat. It's very, very simple. 
The problem with the Wing Chun community is the illusion is something we bought into a long time ago that gives us the false sense of security of how we can beat somebody like this. And I'm just using him for an example. I have a, there's a man out in my area I haven't talked to in probably two decades. His name's John D. Pasquale. And John D. Pasquale ran or runs Illinois Shotokan Karate, which is probably one of the largest karate organizations in the, in the, in the United States at least. And when I was much younger, um, I, I, did, I did Shotokan for maybe six months because I was still trying to explore what I wanted to do was before I found Wing Chun. And John is an, you know, an Italian man. Just bad, but at least if, he, if he's got to be late sixties now, maybe mid set. Man, he's got he's older than me. He's old enough to be like at least a young father figure to me. Um, you couldn't pay me to stand in front of one of his punches. The man's conditioning, the man's training. You just you can't deal with that type of energy. I've also said many times that I tr I used to work in a gym with a guy who was a black belt in uh, another style of karate, and when he used to hit the fist against the heavy bag, it sounded like thunder. And I always asked myself, all right. This guy is skilled. He's been training this style of karate as long as you've been training Wing Chun. Can you really handle one of his punches? With me, because of my background in dealing with a grappling art for many, many, many years before I found Wing Chun, getting punched, getting entangled was never a problem. If you look, do we train in Wing Chun for the energy of somebody who is conditioning their wrists and fists and head and shins for kicking a fucking tree? No. Because you were sold on the illusion that that soft energy comes in. If you look at boxers, boxers are so dangerous because of their core. Isn't it amazing how in Wing Chun we talk about elbow energy? And when you really break it down, you got to have that elbow energy in relationship to your hip energy. And you know why boxers are so fucking good, so elusive, so dangerous, and they're so good with their footwork? When you control your core as well as you do as a boxer, you're moving both to upper and lower triangles in perfect synchronicity to where all they, they just have so much better core control that their hands are going to land where their feet aren't and their feet aren't going to be there when their hands are landing on you. They're superior when it comes down to movement. We don't train like that in Wing Chun. And I'm not telling you to modify your Wing Chun training to break out of the Tan Sao, Gan Sao, Bong Sao. I'm telling you that you don't train for conditioning. You don't train, oh, you're using too much muscle. Guys, if any of you out there on any of these forums and you're still complaining about using too much muscle, please. Yeah, you know, I may be 47, but let's get together and show you how shitty your fucking skill is going to hold up against mine. It doesn't work. It's a real fucking fight. You also don't understand the, ne the necessity for true training, true conditioning, taking fucking hits, taking blows, all this, learning what a fight is. These other arts, and that's why you'll get like, well, why is karate, why isn't it as good in MMA? Why isn't it as good in MMA? I believe that's also core control. I believe that one of the reasons why MMA is superior in a fighting context that's controlled is that core control. Meaning that what do they do, right? If you, if you have to pick up your leg to kick, that means that 50% of your balance is gone. In order to wind up delivering that leg to kick with power, you have to have 100% balance on one leg. Right, because that fifty percent is gone with both your legs gone. They spend so much time controlling their core that they can hit with three tools, and one is left supporting the rest of them. Right? It's nothing more. It's not the style. It's core control. Core control adds to power, adds to movement, adds to evasion, adds to, in, adds to uh, aggression. Core control is everything. That's why you've seen me talk for years in a Wing Chun. I fight with my hips. Because that hips is controlling the core. The core is controlling everything else. I got that from being a wrestler. It's very simple. You see, everybody else in Wing Chun were controlled with the hands. So I really, I really think that you know this is something I've been talking about lately or thinking about lately is like, why is it that the argument was always, let's see this in sparring, let's see the supply in MMA, let's see this. I, I don't know how but people understand why they're bringing this argument in. And the reason, again, why boxers... Grapplers, we know why they're going to be so successful is because they remove all necessity for balance. When you're on the ground, there's no point in it. There's no, what do you need balance for? You have 100% balance. Boxers and MMA, which blend the two, and kickboxing, so boxers and MMA, they're taking away balance and they're balancing it on a superior core on one appendage. And then they've got three open tools, right hand, left hand, and either a right or a left leg. 
while supporting on the opposite leg. It's just a superior concept. That movement, we talk in the Wing Chun all the time about the upper and lower triangle. Boxers and kickboxers are superior in their upper and their lower triangle training than we are. We have the theory, they have the application. So if you trained in Wing Chun with a Wing Chun mindset, with a boxing or a kickboxing or even a karate conditioning, I honestly think that you'd be superior to fighting. And I think that that would eliminate the whole garbage of how do you solve the Wing Chun problem of where it doesn't work. It's how you train. We don't train learning how to take full force hits. We don't train learning how to wind up taking full force grappling. And I don't care how many of you guys, yeah, we do in my school. Yeah, we do. I can guarantee almost 100% that there's probably not at least one uh, Western school of Wing Chun where they're legitimately training. I'm talking with the guy who's got fucking cauliflower ear coming in as a wrestler saying, all right, motherfuckers, how does your Wing Chun work? 100% guarantee you they're not walking in with a guy who is just jacked and ripped and conditioned and muscled and is a phenomenal fucking boxer or kickboxer. You think that you're soft... Oh, I don't think you should do any weightlifting at all in Wing Chun. Energy is going to work. It's not. 100% of the time, you will fail. But I think that if you did wind up, I'm not talking cross training. I don't, I don't think you need to go to a Wing Chun school or a, a, a grappling school. I don't. I don't think you need to go to a boxing school. I think you need to train your core. I think you need to do far more strength training. I think you need to wind up far, uh, 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 training in far more aggressive, full speed circumstances. And you'll watch your Wing Chun will develop out of that. And it's always been that way for mine. So I hope this makes sense. I really want the Wing Chun community to embrace the fact that we do, in my opinion, Wing Chun attributes, Wing Chun concepts, Wing Chun uh, 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 tools have made me superior in whatever context I've had to use it because I came from a, prep a prepared background of full force grappling. I had boxed and I lifted weights all my life. So my body was already a weapon that was made to be sharpened by the Wing Chun school uh, tools. So I guess the bottom line is Wing Chun should never be somebody's first art. I heard somebody say that a, a couple days ago, and I, I've never agreed with that more. I think that, honestly, the if you somebody comes to your Wing Chun school and they're like, I want to learn martial arts, I think you should really discern, well, have you ever done anything else? Because if this is the first art, first art they've ever done, they'll have the Donnie Yen movie-style Wing Chun. I don't think they will ever have uh, fighting Wing Chun. I think you can give somebody a, uh, a Chi Sao Wing Chun, and I think you can give somebody health and benefit, almost like Tai Chi style Chi Sao. I don't think that somebody who has never been in competitive martial arts, competitive sports, or even you know the, the self-proclaimed street fighters, I do not think that if somebody does not have that type of background, they come to Wing Chun, they will never learn how to fight. I really think that's the case. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. I appreciate that. And I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. See you in the next video.